Well, we finally got the Dark Harvest adaptation that we were supposed to get last year. Was it only a year? It feels like forever. To be honest, I didn't think we were ever gonna see it. But now it's out, I've seen some mixed reviews, and of course I've read the book, so let's talk about it. Hey there creepy peeps, I'm Vicky. Welcome to my channel. We talk about horror all year round over here in this little corner of YouTube, so if you also like talking about horror all year round, you should subscribe. The Dark Harvest was originally a 2006 novel of the same name by Norman Partridge and it has now been adapted for the screen by director David Slade and writer Michael Giglio. So the story takes place in a very small isolated town on Halloween night in 1963. In this town every year the teenage boys are starved for multiple days in anticipation of the run in which they take to the streets to hunt down Sawtooth Jack, a monstrous scarecrow-like creature who rises from the cornfields every Halloween. To ensure a successful crop for the next year, one boy must kill Sawtooth Jack before he reaches the church by midnight. The winner of the run is rewarded with a fat check and a new car to get out of the town. And so far, none of the winners have ever returned. So the book is not that long. It's only about 170 pages, but man, is it long-winded. There's a lot of very vibey descriptions of this town around Halloween time and I liked those bits but that's kind of all this book had for me was just vibes. <laughs> Most of the book takes place like within the heads of these various characters. There's not a whole lot of action. If I took out all the action scenes in this book I would have maybe 20 pages. So I was going into the adaptation hopeful that they were gonna take what like at its root was a cool story and obviously for a film make it more visual make it more action-packed and make it more exciting and honestly when I saw the movie it kind of seems like they had a hard time adapting this. <laughs> so much of the dialogue in the movie is expository and therefore unnatural and it becomes a real problem as the true purpose behind the run is revealed. There's like obviously I won't spoil what's going on but there's actually kind of a lot going on in this town and I feel like the filmmakers just didn't really know how to show that in a way that made sense. One of the biggest hurdles going from book to movie with this is that we have multiple scenes throughout this book from the point of view of Sawtooth Jack. Like it's inner dialogue, the creature's inner dialogue and obviously you can't really portray that in film. Quite a bit of the plot development actually happens in those point of view moments from Sawtooth Jack, like the realization of what's going on in the town and all that. Them trying to come up with a different way to show that in the movie, the result just kind of felt like lazy and bad. But very much like the book, the vibes were there in the movie. It looked beautiful. There are a lot of like amazing shots that just like seeing the still images of it is gorgeous. There were a few good action scenes in the first half of the movie. I kind of wish we'd gotten a few more sawtooth kills throughout the film, not just kind of like front loaded at the start of the run, but the kills we did get to see were pretty great I gotta say. <laughs> I feel like the adaptation of this was kind of just exhausting. <laughs> the story's themes were there, or at least how I interpreted them. The older generations exploiting the younger ones for their own gain, plus how the patriarchy fosters and encourages violence in boys and men. But the way they chose to end the movie, which differs greatly from how the book ends, I feel like it ultimately didn't have anything to say about those themes and it kind of just felt pointless. And the themes are surface level at best anyway. There are two whole characters of color in this story. One of them being Kelly who serves as Richie's love interest, but she does hold her own for much of the movie. Um, but I do have to say there there was a moment where I almost turned the movie off. It's the scene where Kelly opens up to Richie about what it's like being definitely one of the only black people in this small and obviously racist town. And Richie's response <laughs> is like oh my god I totally understand how you feel like my brother won the run last year and I haven't heard from him since and it's been really hard on me so I totally get it. It just seemed like the filmmakers didn't want to make 
anything that kind of expanded on any perceived themes of this book. The book, like the movie, the themes are very surface level anyway. It seems like they just kind of wanted to make a style over substance like Halloween flick and they did succeed at doing that. Overall, I was disappointed. I was kind of just hoping for something more. <laughs> and that's because I just wasn't a huge fan of the book. So I'll be really interested to hear from anybody in the comments who also read the book. And if you did enjoy it, I'd love to know how the movie was for you. And for anybody watching this who hasn't seen the movie yet and, and hasn't read the book, if you're wondering if it's something that you might want to watch, you're just looking for something with the Halloween vibes to watch, just something casual to watch. I feel like this might be a good option. Don't expect a whole lot. And the dialogue's pretty bad. And if you're wondering if you should read the book, not that long, like I said, it's a, it's a pretty fast read. Um, I would recommend it to anybody who likes Stephen King's style of writing. A very like internal book, not a lot of external stuff happening. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, there's going to be two more on the screen in just a second for your viewing pleasure if you feel so inclined. If not, I'll see you with a new video later this week. So until then, stay strange. Bye!